railways made Canada, Toronto was one of the hubs and the John Street Roundhouse was one of the busiest roundhouses in the country. My name is Don Lokes. I'm a heritage architect. I've been working on the John Street Roundhouse along with a number of other very talented architects and engineers since 1994. The technology of the Roundhouse is actually very simple. The center point of the turntable is basically a bridge. Engines, baggage car, whatever, can be rolled onto that. And then the bridge truss, which is the turntable, can turn and then deliver that engine to one of, in this case, 32 bays. So the center point of the turntable is the radius point for the whole design of the roundhouse. Right now, we're sitting in Cape Race, a railway car in the middle of Roundhouse Park. It was part of the harbor of the city of Toronto. So we would be underwater. But by 1897, they had filled this down to where Lakeshore Boulevard is now, and they built the first John Street Roundhouse. There was a problem where often with parked rail cars, people and goods couldn't get north to the city, and they realized they had to separate the rail. And so they dumped 2.7 million cubic yards of fill, which allowed them to raise the railway 18 feet above grade at that time and create tunnels for the cars and the pedestrians. And when they did this, of course, they buried the first roundhouse, so they had to build the second roundhouse. So in 1929, they started the construction on the one that's sitting here today. When this was built, this was the most advanced piece of railway machinery in the world. And at that point, rail was the biggest thing in Canada in terms of transportation. The economy of Canada ran on it. And this was one of the busiest rail yards. It serviced 60 engines a day during its peak. So you can just imagine the amount of noise here and coal smoke and just the energy. For over 30 years, the Roundhouse was used to service Canadian Pacific Railway steam locomotives. Then when diesel came in, for another 20 years, they serviced their diesel electric trains until it was finally closed in 1986. So from 1986 to 1994, it was empty. Through a land deal with CPR's real estate branch, Marathon, and the city, there was a trade. The city got the roundhouse, and Marathon got the land that's now where the CN Tower is. At that point, the city had to decide what to do with this newly acquired 120,000 square foot timber and brick roundhouse. And that's exactly when I got involved, along with a group of architects and engineers, to look at the opportunity for repurposing this wonderful building. The first thing that happened was the Metro Toronto Convention Centre wanted to create an addition on the site where half of the roundhouse is. To do that, we carefully disassembled the first 10 bays of the roundhouse and stored the brick windows and Douglas fir columns and beams off-site. Then they excavated down four stories and constructed their convention centre. And when that reached the surface, we came back and we reassembled those 10 bays of the roundhouse. As soon as it was reassembled, it was leased to visionary brewers who called their new brewery Steam Whistle. The next tenant was Leon's Furniture, who renovated 60,000 square feet of the roundhouse on the West End, where I was the supervising heritage architect. Meanwhile, the Toronto Rail Museum set up in the middle bays of the roundhouse. Leon's left, and the next tenant was Cineplex. They have something called the Rec Room. They call it a playroom for millennials. It's really successful. It has wonderful food, and there's event space, and there's a lot of games, like every game you could think of. Heritage restoration of the Roundhouse has been very important. When they built the Toronto Convention Center and the parking garage on top of it, they had to build a circular pit called the turntable pit, and that's actually inside the parking garage. And then the bridge was installed and the machinery to make it work. And it's a working turntable. There's not many of those left. <laughs> Another extremely important aspect of this project is the craftsmanship that went into the restoration of the various elements of the roundhouse. 
and ancillary buildings, such as the Don Station and Cabin D, some amazing carpentry, the cedar shingle turret and roof, the brackets, the shingle work is first class. We investigated what the original colors were. We were able to determine that through testing and replicated them. One of the largest, most ambitious aspects of the restoration was replacing all of the wood sash windows, the exterior and the interior windows as well, for the entire 32 bays. They're all white pine and they all had to be painted and sealed. These windows are an extremely important part of the heritage character of the roundhouse and provided light to all the workers inside. And we're particularly happy with the final effect they have on the interior of the roundhouse. The Don Station was moved here because it was going to be demolished and it was restored and put into place so we can commemorate, not only commemorate, but we could interpret the history and the ancillary buildings. We actually moved them, put them inside the roundhouse while this construction was on and we took them out and set them there and restored them. And I should also mention the coal sand tower, those concrete silos by the entrance to the rec room. We had to move that whole structure almost 800 meters, very carefully because the very thin legs, very heavy superstructure, and we moved it across and put it in its final location. We did the same with the water tower, moved it, put it back when it was finished. And it's because enough people in the city and um, in the development community believed in the value of the history that we were able to preserve here and put in this one place. My name is Barry Zagdansky with State Building Group. I'm here today to discuss our roundhouse development project. Together with our tenants, Steam Whistle, the Toronto Railway Heritage Association, and Cineplex The Rec Room, we were able to achieve something that we're very, very proud of, a public-private partnership with the City of Toronto. These are known as station boards. I'm Phil Spencer and I'm volunteer president of the Toronto Railway Museum. The Toronto Railway Museum is operated by the Toronto Railway Historical Association. The history of railways in Toronto is very significant. It contributed to the development of Toronto as an economic and commercial centre. Our job is to interpret and celebrate that history. My name is Joanne Pinn. I'm the manager of capital assets for the City of Toronto and we look after heritage properties for the city. There are about 40 properties. The Roundhouse, where we are now, is one of those properties. This is a museum that is run entirely by volunteers. The volunteers work on the collection. They restore the cars and the locomotives for us. They hire summer staff to animate the site. We have cabooses, passenger cars, locomotives. We also have a miniature railway here in the park. We carry several thousand parents and young children on the miniature railway each year. It's so important that younger people understand railway history in terms of heritage, understand the story of Canada is based on this kind of thing. And so having the museum, the artifacts, the building itself, people can experience something that has disappeared now. My name's Cam Heaps. I'm a co-founder down here at Steam Whistle Brewing. Steam Whistle is open to the public 363 days of the year. Over 100,000 people a year come through the steam whistle facilities and we take great pride in the roundhouse because it is our birthplace. We got unanimous council approval in July 99 and we started construction in October. The building was derelict at the time. It was being inhabited by some raccoons and a couple of homeless people. So it looked a little rough. February 2000, we started our first brew. We had a pad of concrete and some brewing equipment. The rest of our space was completely unfinished. And March 22, 2000, the first bottle of beer came off the line. It was a great beginning for what has become the rejuvenation of the Roundhouse. Our use is an open door use where we encourage the public to see it and enjoy it. And of course, enjoy some fine beer. And it gives us great pride to show off the Roundhouse, which has been so kind to us. 
My name is Tom O'Dell. I'm the director of large projects at Toronto Hydro. And the largest single project that Toronto Hydro has ever developed is behind me. It's the uh, Copeland Transformer Station. It actually sits underneath the machine shop annex of the Roundhouse. That was the, the building that was adjacent to the Roundhouse that was used to repair locomotives in the 30s and 40s. We needed 50,000 square feet of space below the machine shop in order to build our transformer station. So we removed it brick by brick during the excavation process. Then, once the station came back up to grade, we reassembled the machine shop. Instead of heritage on the bottom, we have heritage on top, and I think this is one of the few examples of that. There were many aspects of our project plan and our design that in order to complement the heritage were brought forward. And one of them is the cort and steel cladding that surrounds the Reese Street face and the Lakeshore Boulevard face of our station. It is the plan drawings of the railway lands from about 1930. It is public art, but it actually serves a functional purpose. Five transformers require cooling. So exhaust ventilation flows through holes in the cort and steel panels. This neighborhood is now a residential neighborhood. There are lots of condominiums, lots of people use this as their community or neighborhood park. What we see with the roundhouse is the tenants being able to add to or contribute to the nature of the use here, where we have lots of things going on that people can enjoy. You need space. The stakeholders and the commitment that they've made, that community of businesses and the museum have really made this a dynamic place it is. It took the vision of the Heritage Architect, which is Don Lutz, of course, the city, of course, everybody getting together to make sure that everybody respected the process, everybody knew what the vision was all about, and everything was done in a way that we could all be proud of, and it's preserved properly. What is so unusual about the Roundhouse is that its semicircular form has created the urban form that's grown up around it. And you can just look around and see the towers, and they actually are back from the park. And this has become an open space and an iconic sort of building in the south end of the city. The other part of it is it's also the south end of that entertainment nexus. So it started with the CN Tower, Rogers Centre, Ripley's, and now this, and there's this hub of entertainment that attracts thousands of people. So what we have here today is a situation that's quite different from when this was abandoned in 1986. I think it's a wonderful addition to the city and to the whole idea of heritage preservation.